So what I want to run through is start to finish how to find people. That's going to be posting an ad. Uh, that's going to be my success with posting an ad recently, just to show you that it, the proof is in the pudding. And then how to get them on your calendar so that you can follow up. Because if you have 10 people that respond to an ad and they're all really good, but you never talk to them, that ad was pointless. You're not really doing the whole thing. It's recruiting, sourcing, and following up. That, that's really what it is. So what I want to do, uh, this was by request. I'm going to uh, really show you here what you got to do. So I'm going to go to Craigslist. I'll start with that. Craigslist in Baltimore is $35 to post a job. There are no hidden fees. There are no secret anything. There's nothing beyond that. It's 35 bucks. They'll put your job ad at the top of the list. And then the next person that posts a job, that'll go to the top of the list. So there's no priorities, um, at least in my market. Some markets are cheaper. I don't think I've seen one more expensive than $35. Like for example, I think down in Alabama, um, it's $25. So it just varies by market. But what I'm going to do again, you guys can see my screen. I'm going to Craigslist. This is going to be really real. I'm going to say create a posting. Oh, it still has me signed in. I'm going to log out actually. So you guys can see this firsthand. So if you do not have a Craigslist ad, you have to create an account just like Facebook or LinkedIn, just like um, really anything. You need an account tied to you. So create an account. You put in your email, whatever email you want to use, it does not matter. Hit create account. You'll then get an email to basically register, click the link in the email, and then you're done. That's it. So I'm going to log back in as if uh, I had just created my account. I'm going to say job offered. So here's the things you can post on Craigslist. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see a little easier. You can have an item for sale. You can sell a house, yada, yada. We're going to say job offered. So I'm going to click that. It automatically goes to the next page. You can see it's $35. And then whatever category you pick, it will go to that next section. Uh, section. You can pick multiple categories, like, for example, human resources and nonprofit. That would be an awful selection for this purpose, but you get my point. Two categories would make this double the cost, so now it's $70. What I've done is simply go down to sales, right, down here, just the one. That's 35 bucks. So go continue. Now, posting title. You'll see everything in green. Well, when I highlight it, of course, it's not in green, but everything in green is what you have to put in. Posting title could be anything. I'm going to say sales and recruiting professionals wanted. That's the job posting we just put up, and that's where I've seen some success. City or neighborhood, it's not green, not mandatory. Postal code, that's mandatory. So you can put any zip code in there you want. It doesn't have to be where you're located. It has to be where you want to target the market. For this purpose alone, I'm just going to put 21117. Happens to be where the office is located. And then this is where you post your job description. It can be um, cool features, uh, the pay structure. It could be... Uh, anything you want to include here in the description. You can see I'm literally just typing that those exact words. The key here is less is more. You don't want to give away the farm on a job ad. People are going to look at this and within seconds, they're going to decide if they want to pursue this or not. It's not going to be every candidate's the perfect fit. They're not going to say, oh man, this is my dream job but they're going to look at it. And if they can't glance at everything within maybe five to 10 seconds, it's more than a page. They're just not, they're not going to bite. And if they do, they're going to ask you a million questions as to what's going on behind the scenes. And those just, those are not the people we want to work with. Put everything in here you think is pertinent. I'll, um, I've sent you guys the posting we put up. I think it's uh, several bullet points and then call Mike, you know, uh, call Mike, for details, and then my number. That was it. It was pretty bland. It said, here's how much money you can make. 
we're partnered with a billion dollar company, you know, a couple highlights on integrity and then call me. That was it. Okay. So that's the description coming down here for employment type. That's up to you. I always say full time because I don't want people doing this part time, but of course it's their prerogative. And then you can choose whatever here. Telecommuting, okay. That's an option I choose often. I'm going to zoom in here. Telecommuting. Um, agents can sell remotely. We all know that. But that's just a feature that you know I check. It might attract more people if it uh, was checked versus not checked. Job title is different than posting title. The posting title is what people see as they are scrolling. The job title itself is whatever you want it to be. A licensed insurance broker, sales professional, it can be anything you want. I make it the same. That's just me. Perhaps you see better in your market, but I just make it the same thing. And then compensation. Again, I you can be as specific or as detailed or vague or whatever as possible. I say commission and renewals. That's a common one that I see. Company name is obviously not my name. Company name is going to be your branch or IMG, or again, it could be global premier benefits. This is where you can enter what you want. Contact info. You can put your email. You can say, show your phone number so that people can call and text you directly. That's totally fine. Oh, it's not gonna let me put fake numbers in there. <laughs> There you go. So that's my actual phone number. No extension. My name is Michael. There you go. So that's how to post a Craigslist ad. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. You hit continue. It's obviously missing some data. So I'll, I'll put uh, just a generic thing there. Oh, employment type full time. See, it's going to stop you if you don't even have everything. So then this is where you pick your area. I know you put in 21117 as the zip code, and then it shows you what that zip code will cover. If I don't like that, and I really want it like over here kind of, or down in Baltimore City, or um, you know, I actually want it in you know, Memphis, I could drag it over to the south side or the north side or the east side, whatever. You can pick that. Hit continue. And then it looks like, oh, you're in Memphis. Did you mean to do that? Or you want Baltimore? This is a perfect example of what I was saying earlier. Some markets have a cheaper posting. Memphis is 25 bucks for a job ad, but Baltimore is 35 bucks for a job ad. Big difference. Then you can add a picture. I just throw in the logo sometimes or a picture of like a generic Google photo of somebody clasping money or something, whatever. You don't even need a picture. Most of them that I see do not have a picture. Done with images. I don't want anything. And this is your final page. This is what people are going to see when they click on your ad. So I'll come down a little bit. This is the job ad right here. Here's your title. This is your description. And then Craigslist adds this principles only. Please do not call me if you are a recruiter. Um, and then don't call us if you want to sell us your gutter services or car detailing. They just add that. You can take that off, but I, I just leave it on. So that's your job ad. You then hit publish and it'll charge you 35 bucks to whatever card you have on file. If you don't have a card on file, you just add one. Okay. That's how to post a job ad on Craigslist. That is fairly straightforward, maybe a little overexplained. Most of you know how to do this, but for the few of you who have asked me to show you this, that's how it's done. Now, as far as Indeed, this is a little different. Indeed, you still need to add an account you need to create one as if it was you um, uh, creating for your business or just personal, whatever. You still need to create an account. And when you create an account, you will then get another email that says, um, you know, click here to register. And then you, you follow that instruction. That takes 30 seconds. That's quite literally no time at all. Creating a job. I'm going to have to sign in here. So give me one second. Um, Yep. It has me automatically. Okay. So create a job is up here on the top left. You click through the stages. It is very, 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 very straightforward. Start a new posting or use a previous posting. Hit continue. You build it from scratch, just like you did on Craigslist. Same stuff. You have the job title, you have, you know, remote or one location. Hit continue. It's all the same stuff. 
none of this is, is going to be mind boggling or anything. Uh, so you follow the steps and you go through the prompts and you hit save, continue, save, continue until you get to the end. What I want to show you is the campaigns we have, or excuse me, the jobs, sorry. And this is real time. I'm not filtering anything. I'm just zooming in so you can have a better time seeing it. The sales and recruiting professional, same thing as Craigslist, same job posting, same details, same everything. I have, and hopefully you can see this, it gives you a little bit of information and statistics. But since the 6th, which was seven days ago, I have 265 clicks and 70 active, oh, it's cutting off a little bit, active candidates. When I zoom in, it doesn't look right, but I have 70 active candidates who have actually applied to this job and 265 total clicks. That might be one person clicking 265 times. That might be 265 different people clicking once, any combination of the two. Um, yesterday, I had 66. Again, it's a little hard to see that as I'm zoomed in, but I had 66 people yesterday and four more since then have applied. So I have four people that are new that I haven't even talked to yet. And that's from one free job posting. I don't have a paid budget on this ad. This is the ad itself right here. These details are what we emailed you guys last week. Here's your income. Here's a little bit about integrity, but we don't mention them by name. We talk about the leads. We have support. You have to have some experience. Call Michael. And then my contact info is on, on the actual job page for a, um, somebody looking for a job. My information is on there. And then once I have this pool of people, the 70 candidates, I'm going to come over here on the left. It says candidates. And again, you're seeing everything, all the behind the scenes, not, not shirking any uh, tricks here. These are all. Michael, the yes. May I interrupt you for a second? Go ahead. Okay, on there, you said, if you go back to the page, you said you do not um, mention integrity by name. Well, I do here. I'm, not, I'm saying in the job posting, it says integrity right there. That, 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 was, that was what was confusing me. Oh, sorry. So it is okay for us to say that we are, because that's one of our perks, one of our, you know. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. What I was saying was, I don't want to make it seem like I have a job where you work at Integrity in Dallas at their headquarters. Okay. These are, right. So these are independent contractors. They're working essentially for themselves. They're just contracted with you and us. So mentioning Integrity, that's a killer. Got to have that. But mentioning, um, you know, Michael Kaplan Insurance, nobody's probably heard of me. But if they are in the business, they've probably heard of Integrity. So you're right. You absolutely want to. Um, mention them. Now, for the candidates that have applied, I'm going to make this really easy. Every one of them that applies, I get an email in real time that says, hey, John Doe applied to your job. So then I can jump on that real quick. It literally takes me 10 seconds to do this. I'm not exaggerating. I come here to, and this is going to be a real person, Tessa Bryant, whoever that is. I'm going to click this little options button over here, go to message, and usually it brings me right to their resume if it loads up easily. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You can always just download it. It's not that big a deal. This person's in Salt Lake City. Here's her resume. Doesn't really matter. I'm coming over here to this little box here that says her name at the bottom. And I'm going to send a template that I typed up. This isn't something that they had already. It's called Calendly. It says, hey, Tessa. It just puts her first name in there. Hey, thanks for applying. We, we got a tremendous response. Thank you so much for applying. Please schedule me for a call. I'm far too busy to call every single person, but if you book me for a call, I'll make time for you. That's not exactly what it says, but it says that to some extent. So I send that. And I'm about to do that right now. Send. It even says sending. And now it says sent. So I know for sure Tessa got that message and it comes to her email as a formal uh, uh, message. So then... What that leads me to is Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y. That is a free service that I use for people to book me for a call. If you've ever seen one of my emails, and I'm going to try to pull that up real quick, um, email. If I've ever sent you an email, you see my signature at the bottom. It's got a picture of me. 
Um, here, I'll do this for you guys. So this is my email signature. I'll zoom in again so you guys can see it. It says my name, my title, my phone number, schedule a meeting with me, our logo, and my picture. This link that says schedule a meeting with me here, this is a link to go to my Calendly page. I'm just going to click this open so you guys can see. If somebody wanted to book me for a call from that job ad, they can see the next several days, weeks, actually. Let's say Tuesday. What do I have available on Tuesday? I've got all the time in the world for anybody that wants to talk to me on Tuesday. And this is a 15-minute call. They also have 30 minutes and I believe an hour or 45. They have different increments of time. For the free account, you can only have one active at a time, meaning a 15-minute block. You can't have a 15-minute and a 60-minute. You can only have one. So I choose 15 because it gives me the most flexibility and I can always follow back up with somebody. So I'm sharing all this with you because I'm saying, and I'm going to get back to the page here, how to post an ad. We went over that. How to create a custom calendar. We went over that. So not only are you getting people sourced and funneled into your group, but then you've also got them on your calendar. And then Calendly, that service I just shared with you, this can integrate I don't know off the top of my head, Eddie and I were trying to play with that, um, but uh, this can integrate to your iPhone calendar, to your Outlook calendar, or your Office 365. Uh, it can sync to other calendars, so it automatically adds to it, so you don't even have to do all this twice. And now here's what it looks like. Again, I'm, this is probably the last item I have here. Um, this is what it looks like in real time. So today... Ironically, Friday the 13th, hopefully nobody's that superstitious. You can see I have a call at 11 with Alan, call at noon with Teresa. I don't know these people. These are the ones that apply to the job. So uh, in here, if I click on one of these, it'll show me their contact information and the notes. I don't really need that for this particular purpose. I'm just going to call them and, and get to know them and recruit them. But this is what it looks like on Calendly. And so I can set all the up. I can set up my uh, availability to be any times that I want. I, of course, have it so it's after the morning meetings, but before the end of my day. So I've got a lot of availability. You could make it only for certain days, totally up to you. But this creates a funnel so that you have a real log, right? See, these are all upcoming appointments that I have for today. This is Monday. This is Tuesday. This is next Friday. These are all people that saw the ad and booked me for a call. Now, if I look at the past, you can see how successful this posting has been. This was yesterday. I had one at 5.15, 3 o'clock, 2.30, so on and so forth. My first one was at 9.15. I was recruiting all day. Same with Wednesday, same with Tuesday. I can go back to even earlier than that. I think Monday was crazy. Um, yeah, Monday I had a 5.15. My last one, my first one was 11.30 because we have the morning meeting. You can see... So that's, it's tremendous. It's a great tool to leverage to help better run your recruiting business. Does anybody have any questions on any of that stuff um, before I pass the microphone back off? Great stuff, Mike. My question is this. When these people respond to your ad, recruiting ad, mm -hmm. what, what are some of the biggest things or what main things that they're looking for are they are they lead driven individuals or how do you address that issue when they're talking about they're looking for something like uh they, they, i thought this was a steady job that are you going to supply me in in flux of lead how do you answer that question you know if i'm being honest i haven't gotten anybody like that um i can tell you how i would handle it the you see the job posting says you can make six figures you're with an insurance company called integrity so if they look it up they're they're going to have an idea uh, but if they want, you know, a salary job where they show up to an office every day, that's just not somebody we want to work with, to be honest. I could try to recruit them and change their mind and, you know, tell them how great this is. But at the end of the day, somebody who wants to clock in and clock out is going to be a drain on our resources. Honestly, if they wanted, you know, live transfer, like, let's say they're an agent. I did have one of these guys ever. So maybe that's a good example. I had somebody who basically was an agent right now. He's, he does sell Medicare. He has live transfers, but the leads themselves, he gets like one a day. 
And that's his prime source of leads. So he said, what do you guys do that can help me in my situation? Well, I said, we don't really do live transfers as an organization. Of course, as an independent broker, you can do whatever you want to do as long as it's compliant. But our leads are mostly direct mail. And that got into the conversation of, you know, so you have to call out to these leads, schedule the appointment, and then, you know, do your thing. If it's in person or not, you still have to make that contact with the lead. You're really running a business. You're not just closing sales. And he said, you know, that's, that's not really what I'm looking for. I said, I think you're right. <laughs> you might be right. We are not everyone's cup of tea. We are a big platform to help better run your business. What you should do is leverage our tools and our resources to amplify what you already do. If you're looking to show up and just you know, take a bunch of calls and close people. There are a ton of call centers hiring for that exact job. I'll tell you though, you're going to sacrifice X, Y, and Z commissions, renewals, all that stuff to get that ease of the job. So you give up the ease of the job to make more money and build a, an empire, right? Retire in five years. Or if you just really want to show up and leave work at the door, that's your prerogative. I don't take that personally at all. I know you're not the right fit for us, but I know you the right job is out there for you. I wish you the best of luck. If anything changes, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I send that guy an email with my info, a little, you know, highlight reel of who we are. And that's that. Maybe ask for a referral, but usually those guys I have found they they never want to give up referrals. They just want an easy job. But that's my experience. Does that answer your question? That was a great response because basically so what you're saying is that we're basically looking for business minded business owner who want to develop their own uh, create their own um wealth for space okay got right. you you want entrepreneurs guys you, you, i mean there's millions of them out there don't waste your time with someone that's looking for a 15 dollar an hour job it's just not worth your time you, you don't have that kind of time to try to transform their mindset and there's certain people in this world are happy with 15 bucks an hour you know get their groove on friday night do nothing all weekend come in, you know, hung over Monday morning and go through the process again. <laughs> you know, that's that not who you're looking for. So guys, you can weed them out right away. You want a great phrase I used to say when they asked about commission, I'm like, are you afraid of commission? If they said yes, I was like, you know what, this is good. I'm gonna be for you. Why why bother? Don't waste your time or your time. I, I'm just gonna say, hey, this is probably not the right fit for you. I'll send you an email. Maybe you'll come across some money that does, or maybe you'll change your mind. You want to get into the world of being an entrepreneur, controlling your own destiny, making six figures, having lifetime renewals, one day becoming an integrity partner. If that's for you, give me a call back. But don't waste your time with that, okay? You don't. It's just not worth it. Trying to convince someone that's brainwashed to be broke their whole life, you know, and live off the system. You just don't have that kind. There's too many other people out there that want what we have, you know, there's too many, there's millions of them out there that want what we have. Okay. Don't waste your time with that $15 hour, hour mindset person. Next question. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Uh, go ahead, Eddie. Well, I had a, uh, an agent that uh, does life and it turns out after I spoke with her, she went through five FMOs in one year. Now I understand wow. that there's some bad FMOs out there, but if you go through five, then that, I think the problem might be with you. Yeah. And so finally, I just told her, I said, listen, I think that you don't understand you know, what a FMO's job is and what your, you know, the fact that you're an entrepreneur um, and your job is. I said, you need to understand that you're in business for yourself and you need to have a plan on how you're going to grow your business. And then you, you use the FMO for the support that they offer, the tools that they have, you know, if they have some leads, great, but don't just depend on them for leads. What are you doing to generate your own? Right. And then I Pretty wish good. her the best because she didn't, th that wasn't what she was looking for. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's an old Seinfeld episode for that one. It's not me, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Anything else, Michael, real quick, bud? Because I want to let Eddie speak a, a little bit longer on uh, his results that he did because and i appreciate your all's patience i know we're well above the hour but there's some more important things i think you need to hear especially coming from eddie but before we go to that uh michael anything else you have in regards to your topic uh two wrap-up points I, I saw actually it's funny joe gray just chatted in he's talking to a lot of lead junkies lately uh, of course, I have two. Uh, anybody who is actively recruiting is going to get the same thing. Um, I will say, uh, Pierre, uh, oh, yeah, great note. 
Uh, LinkedIn is awesome for entrepreneurs. Yes, LinkedIn is another great tool. Social media by itself is a, is a tremendous tool to leverage. Uh, if you're not doing that, you're, you're really missing out. But on a side note, you guys, I will say uh, <laughs> if you have ever gotten a list of agents from us, right? So, you know, we have the database. If you ask for a list, I can easily get that for you. No problem. Joe Gray, I know you've gotten some. Uh, uh, there have been plenty of people on this call who've gotten a list from us. If you think spending time on one producer trying to change their mind is worth your time, you're really missing the boat. If I've ever given you a list, it is thousands of people deep, thousands. There's got to be a few people in that odds that are worth your time and your organization. The challenge is just getting to all of them. Sure, you could just call down the list by all means. Uh, that's your prerogative, but that's not really an effective use of your time. It's not really an effective use of my time either, to be quite honest. That's where this job posting came from. The job postings we just reviewed are for recruiters. And I've talked to about 40-ish. I'd really, I don't know the actual number. It was about 40. Um, and I've gotten three or four that are actually recruiters in their own capacity. Uh, one of them is Catrice. I really like her. She's down in Florida. Uh, she homeschools her kids. She's great. We had a great conversation yesterday. She's an active recruiter. She just doesn't have a W-2 job. She loves this because she homeschools her kids and she needs the flexibility. But I can tell from talking to her for 30 seconds, she's, she's going to be a killer. I, I know it. <laughs> I don't have to do a lot to help that person. And that's what you really want. You don't want to hire someone to train them for six weeks for them to flake out. You want to hire someone who's already got the mindset. You just show them the direction. And if you invest too much time on the wrong person, you're just, you're going to get burnt out. And I think maybe that has happened to some of you and that sucks. But the bottom line is there are more people out there. That's what I wanted to close with. Some will, some won't. So what next? You got to move on. <laughs> it, you got to move on. But great point, Michael. Anything else, Michael, before we go on to Eddie? Because I really want people to hear what Eddie. You know, I, yeah. this, this is, it's funny. I put this together yesterday. It's outdated. I had 66 responses yesterday. But as you guys saw, I have 70 today. So that's four brand new ones. And these are all $1,000 bonus people. They're not, I'm not paying them anything until they give me some. So <laughs> just, uh, just a, a formal note on the recruiting boot camp. I'm putting that together now. That should be done next week. I'll give you guys updates um, as that's done. And then other tools like the job boards and social media and email blasts. You guys know what this is. This is not new. Um, but I figure if I put it in front of you, the more often maybe you'll decide to do that today. You'll get the orphan agent list or you'll, you'll send an email blast. Who knows? But that's, that's what I got. Any questions before we shift over to Eddie? Hey, this is Joe from Philly. I have a question. I just have a comment. I just want to give props to the ad that you sent me, Michael. Uh, I put it um, a Craigslist post in Maryland and also in Philly. Yeah, I got four from Maryland and two from Philly. I got a call today. I got a call on Monday. And I got I, I know you said you guys say don't mess with any greenies, but I got two eager people, one from Africa, one from one, a young person. And they, they, they committed to uh, getting their licenses and everything. So I told them when they get their license to give me a call and we'll go from there. Excellent. Great. Congrats. And by the way, greenies are great. It's got to be the right kind of green. But great stuff. Good job. Yeah. Uh, gr when we say greenie, we mean like, you know, uh, an 18-year-old who needs a job. That is not the one you want. But somebody who sold stuff before, right? Or they have a good mindset or they're just a positive person, you could always use one of those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Cause this guy's he's he's done all sales. <clears throat> Excuse me, he's done all sales. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you the best, the best in this business, whether a recruiter or an agent or so, someone that's sold other products before. A great salesperson, once they know the product and how it works, can sell about anything. So I, I love taking guys that were former, you know, uh, car salesmen, stockbrokers, annuity salespeople, uh, final expense salespeople. It doesn't matter what they sold. It doesn't even have to be insurance. I mean, bartenders and waiters are great, you know, because they're good with people and they know how to work on tips, which is another form of commission. So, yeah, there's greenies are fun. It's just the right type of greenie. Good stuff. Anything else real quick? Other final questions? Because I want Eddie to. Eddie's got some great stuff he needs to share. You guys got to hear this. So let's go and go right to Eddie. Michael. 
Go ahead, Eddie. The floor is yours. All righty. Well, thank you for that. I just want to say first, starting out, that when Michael put out and, and Tony put out this ad, I didn't even, within 30 minutes of the meeting ending, my ad was running. And, you know, it's just 35 bucks. So people, if you're on this call and you haven't thrown that ad out, you're doing yourself a disservice because even if for some reason you got nobody to call you, you're out 35 bucks. But what if you just get one person and that person actually gets to work? Now, I threw out that ad and the first person that called me was a guy who, based on my experience and everything that we shared, we had a great conversation. I was calling him a whale. Why? Because this guy has been in sales well, you know, since Moses was a corporal in the Marine Corps, and he uh, has broken almost every record out there, has taken divisions of Fortune 500 companies that were dying, turned them around, you know, opened up a, a, a tax uh, um, audit defense uh, company that you probably heard about because it was on every major talk radio station, made it successful, sold it retired, got bored, says, I can't stay retired. I'm jumping back into business. And so now he's looking, he finds my app and he gives me a call and, you know, I go through all of this. And so then I reach out to Tony because in my mind with this guy's track record, you know, he's going to want to talk to somebody who's at his level or above. And Tony is definitely above his level. So I reach out to Tony and said, Tony, would you be willing to speak with him? I would really appreciate that. You know, and he said, sure, no problem. So I sat there and I took out my pen and I'm taking notes and I do the introduction and I shut up. And this call goes about 40 minutes. But the first 20 minutes, it was nothing about business whatsoever. And I'm over here listening and, and Tony's just, hey, yeah, you know, how you doing? And getting to know the guy and he's talking about family and he's talking about veterans. And this guy comes out and now starts telling Tony how his father died. And I'm thinking, damn. You know, if this guy is telling you how your father died, you, you just bonded with this person like there's no tomorrow. And, you know, then he tried to, you know, um, pull out of Tony in, well, about the job. Oh, no, no, no. I'll get to that in just one second. But and then Tony would ask another open ended question about him. And he would be talking about, you know, his wife getting her doctorate, the fact that they sold their house in Tennessee to move here because it was a coin, co a, a coin toss as to whether it was going to be Texas or here and blah, 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 blah. And then he tried to impress Tony. And he's talking about how he's being recruited by this company and they're looking to offer this to him and that and the other thing. And, and Tony just without a blink, says, you know what? That's fantastic. You know, I'm part of the uh, acquisitions team as well as IMG because we're buying up companies left and right. You know, that if you put us together with them and we feel that they're worth it and we buy them, we'll give you a finder's fee. <laughs> Just took it away from them and told them we're better than your company. What the hell are you talking about without saying those words? You know, and, and the guy blinked. And then, of course, he said, well, you know, that, you know, uh, absolutely, I haven't made up my mind, blah, 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 blah. And then Tony just said, listen, you know, I, uh, what we have here, and he just went through it and, and told him, this is what we have. But also, let, let me show you what's going on with who we are with, with IMG, shared some stuff about IMG, that if you're in, at that level of business, you know, was, was an eye-opening, you know, smack between the eyes opportunity. And then, again, took it away from him and said, listen, you know what? You know, this may not be for you. Wherever you go, I wish you the most success, you know, and let's exchange phone numbers, you know, because I got a feeling that, you know, we could do other things together in the future. And if you do come on, you know, we have major opportunities, get your foot in the door with the recruiting here. And, you know, we may have some positions where we're actually giving you territories or this position or that position. And then that was it and dropped it. You know, it was such an amazing call that, this guy went from, I'm on top of the world, you need to be chasing me, to the, wait a minute, I don't want to lose this opportunity, so you know, don't count me out yet. And, and I really believe that something's going to come from this. We've got to do a follow-up next week. Um, but you know, what I learned from that is, is don't jump into the opportunity right away. If they try to suck you into that, don't fall for that ploy because you're going to lose them. Because now all you're doing is trying to sell them on what you have and you have not made a friend that he's willing or she's willing to
to actually have a conversation and get to know you and like you. Because remember, people buy from people they like. So if you can't get to that point where you're bonded, you're talking, you're laughing, you're joking, you're, you're sharing history, you're, you're, you're not there yet to start talking about the opportunity. And then when you get to the opportunity, don't, don't, don't come across as if you're desperate. Just, hey, this is what it is, and there's more behind it, and you know, we got this, that, and the other thing, and you got to know who IMG is so you can throw that in their face. And say, you know, and we're we're partnering with IMG. This is what they bring to the table. This is what's on the table for you. And then, you know, if they have in hall, just say, hey, no, no worries. If it's not for you, no big deal. You know, it's not for everybody. And you take it away. And it's an amazing thing that when you take something away from somebody, they want it back. So, you know, it was an amazing experience. Uh, I hope you get a lot out of it. You know, I'll tell you right now, I'm running that ad. I got a guy yesterday. He called me. I took this very same model from Tony. I spoke probably 15, 20 minutes with this guy. He already sent in an application. I already sent it to Kathy. Awesome. I mean, we got off the phone within a half hour. I had his application for a recruiter. Wow. So it works, folks. I turn it well, back well, Eddie, I appreciate you being a student of the business. I actually enjoyed it. Um, but, yeah, there's an art to selling. There's also an art to recruiting. and It's the same art. Just like if there's an art to dating, it's the same art. It's an art to inspiring kids to learn a sport or learn how to do, you know, know English and math. It's an art. And most agents and recruiters and salespeople do it wrong. The way you got to build a relationship, what I did with that guy, Jim, and I, and I think the guy's um, unbelievable, was a great guy, you know, but it's about building relationships. That guy, after 10 minutes, I can make somebody fall in love with me. That's my goal. They're going to love me. <laughs> in 10 minutes how do you do that you got to be impressed by them you got to listen to them and whoever asked the questions and control it eddie saw i didn't jump in there about what we do i said Let, i want to know about this man's family what his likes his dislikes where he comes i'm trying to find out if i really even want to work with this guy the more you let somebody talk the more they like you and the more you can find out and dissect if they're right for your team most agents and most recruiters, within two minutes, they're already talking about the deal. I don't talk about what we do. Let me learn about you first. You see what I mean? And that way, they fall in love with me. This guy's telling me personal stuff that most people, he probably won't tell to most people. How did I do that? It's the art of it, building a relationship with people in 10 minutes. I do it by asking questions and keeping control and asking them questions about him. I used his name often. I, you know, I called him Jim. You know, I was, you know, I was, you know, I was sincerely interested in him and his family. Why did he move from where he was? Why did he sell the company? Why did he get married? You know, why, why is he back in it? those things? I want, I was very inquisitive. I took over a page of notes on this guy, you know, and then I did a lot of the takeaways. You got to do a takeaway, you know, just like in dating, just like in, you know, anything else in sales, you got to be able to walk away from it. It's amazing how people want something when they think they can't have it or they may not be good enough for it, now they want it. So guys, if you want, as I did for Eddie, I'll do that for you. Just to train you, get me on the phone with somebody. You get the work up, get me on the phone with them. I'll show you the same steps. Take notes, it's not that hard. It's the same way I sell, okay? But Eddie, thanks for sharing that. Thanks for allowing me to do that for you. And I'll do it again if you need to. I, I enjoy, I don't, I, I, I don't just like this. I love it. I love recruiting. I love talking to people like Jim. I don't care how big of a whale he is. You get me on the phone with Elon Musk, I'm going to recruit him. <laughs> well, I, I want to say thank you, Tony, because uh, I know you're busy and everybody's trying to pull you in every uh, direction. And for making that time for me, um, it truly shows that you know you, you do what you're saying. And I want to thank you for that. You're very welcome. I, I would do that for anybody. And it's a pleasure. It's an honor. It's uh, Eddie, um, you guys are my family. Um, I love each and every one of you guys. You guys are the most important people outside my immediate family. You guys are the most important people in my life because I, I truly mean what I said at the beginning of this. I want wealth and success for you and your family. And Eddie, you're going to do it big. You know, I, I, you know, I, I have no doubt, Eddie, because your passion, your dedication, you know, you're following the program, you're listening. You just did it. You know, if you just, just do what we tell you to do, it'll work. You're going to be a huge success, Eddie. I have no doubt you're going to own the state of Florida. You're not just going to have an agency, Eddie. You're going to own the state of Florida. You're going to have thousands of agents 
you know, that are following your leadership because you're a great leader. And I want to thank you again for your service to our country, Eddie. I want to thank you for being one of our newest GA that's applying what we're, we're telling you and making things happen. So thank you, Eddie. Big things are coming your way, bud. Thank any you. final any final questions before we wrap? I know we went well uh, atop the hour because I, I wanted y'all to hear from Eddie. And, and, and my, that's an open offer for the, everyone in this call. Line up a call with me. I will do it for you to show you how it works. To, tra to train you and lock down a well for you if you need me to do that. I will do that anytime. Just give me advance notice. I'll make time for each and every one of you all to do that. Okay? Next slide. Tony, how do you want us to give you advance notice? Uh, you want us to text you or give you a yeah, direct call? Yeah, yeah, text me. Don't, you know, calling me is going to be tough, uh, but they definitely don't email me. Text me. Yes, definitely text okay. me. Tony, I got to give me the person's name. What I'll need is their name. Give me a little bit of details, like two or three bullet points, and say, Tony, what? give me two or three different time slots. Okay. And, and then, then you and I can get on the phone, Joe. And then, like Eddie and I did, give me a little bit more background on this guy. And I took notes when Eddie shared, so I'm ready for that call. So get me some something to work on. So I already knew a little bit about this guy and did some research myself. So I sound halfway intelligent to him when I call. I take every I take every recruiting call like it could be um, you know the next Elon Musk in my business, you know. So I, I take it serious. That's why I take notes. And I do a little bit of research if I can on the person for the call. That impresses people when you know a little bit about their business, about their life, where they're from. That's part of the art of recruiting as well. Same thing I do in sales. I don't know if y'all know this. You need to teach this to your people if you're not doing it yourself. I always make sure I research the market. So that person lives in, you know, Timbuktu, Alabama. I know everything about Timbuktu, Alabama before I make the call, or at least enough to have a conversation about their community. You know, and if I could find something on my client that's going to be pertinent to the call, you know, they go, wow, you know that about me? Like, Jim was impressed. I knew some things about him. Well, how did I do that? Well, I got it from Eddie. <laughs> and then I looked up his company that he, he found it. And I just said, I need his two or three points. Boom. This, now I look that much more credible, this guy, that I'm serious. I'm dead serious about winning in business. You know, you know, it's like recruiting in the NFL. That's why they have those combines and they go meet with the kids to make sure they're right for their team. But then the kids impress out that this coach knows everything about me. I want to join that team because he knows me. He wants me. He believes in me. And he's, he's done his research. Same thing in selling. You know, if you want to get me to buy something from you, you better know a little bit about me. There's nothing where I had a, I had a, just so you all know, I had a bank that wanted to do business with me. They, you know, you know, refer, re, they were referred by a stockbroker to me to talk to. They didn't know nothing about me. They didn't watch my video. They didn't know nothing about me, my wife, my business. They just wanted me to invest money into their, 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 their they wanted to be my money managers. You did, wait a minute. You want, you know, five, ten million dollars of my money to invest in your firm. And you don't know one thing. I even told the other group that they laughed because the other group that's trying to win me over says, hey, we could do things outside so I can see that. They knew about me. They watched my video. They took notes. This other group was like, we're so-and-so bank and wealth managers, and we're number five. And, oh, I heard how great they were. They didn't know nothing about me. You think they got the business? Nope. You got to treat that client and that recruit like it's a million-dollar recruit, million-dollar million client. You got to know two or three things about them that you can pick up either through your research or whoever's the referee. That's what I did with Eddie. That's why I think Jim opened up and is ready to jump aboard. It's about the relationship. Get them to fall in love with you in 10 minutes. How you do that by asking questions, sincere questions, and trying to get to know them. Any other questions real quick? Great question, Jim. And I'll do one-on-one -on -one workshops with you like this. I know we're limited on time. If you're struggling, you're recruiting, I can fix you in 40 minutes. Give me a call. I'll work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Just call me, text me, Tony. How do you handle this? We'll role play together. Get me on a phone, a live phone call like uh, Eddie did. Guys, y'all need me anyway. Please call me. Please text me. If you got somebody you need me to recruit, help you recruit, I'll do it for you. Uh, great way for you to learn how I do it. And if you do it that way, guys, recruiting becomes fun. It becomes easier. You'll make more money. And ultimately, you'll build a special team That'll, that'll, that'll rival anything else out there. Guys, we're on, on a pace, guys, to really do something tremendous this year. I'm so honored and blessed to be able to pay this for y'all. May God continue to bless y'all.